Hello and welcome back to what may be the final part of this video series. Again, we may come back to this in the future when we do some amendments and some tweaks. Uh, I'm hoping that as a community, you can suggest some ways to improve this and fix this. There's already a few ways that I'm already working out how to improve this, but I want to see what you think. And this is a kind of collaborative effort, let's say. So we have our final value being outputted here. We now need to tell this to only show us the answer or result that we'd expect. So I've already done the maths for you with this, so I already know what the results need to be to show what animal. So I'm just going to click and drag from this value that we created last time. And again, you don't need this here, but I'm just keeping that there so we can uh, see what we're doing for the purposes of illustration. You could just directly go from the add into the equals. And I'm just going to create three of these. So for each for one for a cat, one for a dog, one for a mouse. And I would have a fourth if it was to be any other number, so less than or equals to or between range, etc. But for now, I'm just going to again just show the three results I'd expect. So the first one is if it equals to 10, I want it to show us our cat. If it's equal to seven this will equal to, this will show us our dog if this is equal to eight then i'd expect this to be our rodent so what i like to again do is i like to double check everything so it doesn't just give us the answer just based on the value it has to also meet a set of two conditions so i'm going to click and drag from here and add an, another and so and patches are quite heavy in this tutorial and again i apologize for that so I want this, these answers or results to only be shown when our counter equals exactly 6 or our answer result. So I'm just going to click and drag this over here out of the way. Again, sorry about spaghetti junction over here. So we've got our equals exactly from our counter, which is from our screen tab. So when it equals 6 then we want this to be hooked into our and. So it needs to be the final question or answer tap, so the sixth tap. And the answer also needs to equal this for this to trigger and show that result. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and just change the uh, top input. By copying and pasting, it's keep, kept my uh, second input already established. Like so. So this is where we need to just make sure and do a bit of sanity checking. So if I go to my answers, I have answer one, which is my cat. So I know that cat should be 10. So I hook this into the top input. So if equals 10, then it's a cat. If it equals seven, it's going to give us the dog result. And if this equals 3, this should give us our mouse result. Now I'm just going to reset. And we're going to now test if this works. So I'm going to think of cats. I'm going to try and get a cat result. So do I like long walks? Typically cats don't. Do they enjoy baths? Typically no. Do they eat a lot of cheese? Typically no. Are they considered rodents? No. And do they bark? No. So my result, cat, as I expect. So this is the, one of the issues we need to fix, is actually getting it to reset. So we won't cover that in this video, so it's something that I need to find. So I might, like I said, we'll cover this in an amendment later on. So I'm now going to think of a dog. So do dogs like long walks? Yes. Do they enjoy baths? Typically yes. Do they eat a lot of cheese? No. Are they considered rodents? No. Do they bark? Yes. So we should have a dog result, which is correct. Do they like long walks? No. So I'm thinking of a mouse. Do they enjoy baths? Typically no. Do they eat our cheese? Yes. Are they considered rodents? Yes. Do they bark? No. And that should give us our mouse. So if I was to give results that are anything else, then it should, uh, it could still be tricked. So it's not foolproof. So you can still get um, 
it can still get it wrong for example like there it really shouldn't give me a dog result because it's the values are equal and the same as what it would have expected but again this is one of those things where i kind of giving you an idea and the fundamentals and it's up to you to kind of improve it and go further this is principally the way that i imagine this effect should work without using script if you want to make this more accurate we we'll just use a javascript um, but i'm trying to keep this purely patch led and in fact to some degree having the computer try and guess what it is and not being correct kind of is more natural than it always being right um, but this gives it the best chance of being of giving a good or accurate result as long as the user is honest and only picks one of those three results if they don't answer the results as we would expect then it will give us an erroneous answer at the end but the same is pretty true for most quizzes okay so let me just quickly check that we haven't missed anything off uh, we've got that in there we have all this connected so what we have here is the basic setup um, if I wanted to change this from screen tap I would just go to device uh, sorry I'd go to camera drag my camera into my patch editor And I would want to basically uh, hook up this to this somehow. However, this wouldn't actually continue increasing it. This would just do the initial firing. So this is uh, where we kind of hit a little bit of a um, a block. Because it's only going to increase every time I start a new video, which is not the way I want it to be. So we would actually uh, need to think of maybe having a kind of screen recording as a to send a pulse. And a runtime with our offset. So what we need to do is a kind of check. So the the runtime would run uh, once it equals a less than or a certain value. We need to fire a signal, and only when this uh, is recording and triggered, and this equals a value less than um, what we set, then it will. Add, send a false a pulse signal to our increase here and increase it incrementally one this is the bit I'm kind of haven't quite fully tested worked out so I like I said there might be an amendment where we get this hooked up and working based on a timer and then all we need to do is have it so every time that this uh, the uh, true or false trigger is responded that we send a signal back to the offset with, to reset it to then start the timer again to then start it incrementing and so on that's the way I imagine it working, and that's the way I'm thinking it working. The thing we could do is, at the moment, the question is currently uh, over our face. So if I want to offset that and actually have it so it's above our head, so I just need to quickly select my question, go to Actions, Position on Face, Forehead. This will create us a Face Finder, a Face Select, a Face Follower, and the Forehead Patches. But again, it's not still a little bit not where I want it to be position-wise. So I'm just going to move my question feed to position over here. Drag from my forehead. Add an add patch. Change this add patch to be a vector three. Link that back up to my feed position. And now I want to adjust the y value. So if I, for example, added two, it's going to move it way too much. If I do a 0 0.5, it's still too much. So I want to increment this by a very small amount. So let's say 0 0.1. This will now position the question above the head rather than positioning it on the actual forehead itself. I then just simply need to select each of my null objects, so my questions and my answers. Select the position for each of these and hook these up to my add patch, like so. Making sure I'm using the position value as the link that's going on. So this effect, as uh, you may have worked out by now, is something that can't uh, or wouldn't be necessarily ready for deployment because of the fact nature of the fact that it uses a lot of text. So again, this is a very much a work in progress sort of concept. Ways around it is you could have the questions be uh, auditory, or you could use iconography rather than text to actually ask the questions. 
There's also at the moment uh, no reset. So one of the ways, like I just earlier said, that we could look at a reset is by looking at the run time and using an offset to reset all the values. But again, at the moment, this is as far as we're going to get with this uh, what are you effect. And it's up to you now to sort of see if you can take this further. Again, I'm just trying to give you the ideas and the tools. And then it's up to you to stick together everything like Lego to build something unique and creative. So I've been Steve Fisher. This has been the Catalyst channel. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. If this has been of any use to you, please let me know. Remember to share your suggestions down in the comment section. Goodbye.